This week on This is America in the World, our guest is Ambassador Jose Luis Husha, Ambassador of the Republic of Cabo Verde to the United States. He's also former Ambassador of the Republic of Cabo Verde to Belgium and former Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs for the Republic of Cabo Verde. Mr. Ambassador, welcome. It's nice to sit and chat with you and learn about your country. Cabo Verde. New name, Cabo Verde. Everybody has known Cape Verde for such a long time. How did that change come about? Why did that change come about? Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me in your program. Cabo Verde is the permanent name of my country. Uh, but very often uh, we went through translation in French Cap Vert, in English Cape Verde, and then very often also it, bring, it, it brought some confusions to people. It's why we uh, uh, send letters to United Nations and to most of the country to tell our interest in having the official appellation of the country Cabo Verde. Uh, West African country, huh? About. Uh off the coast of uh, what was Senegal, I guess, huh? Yeah. Cape Verde is located at the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, about 375 miles off the west coast of Africa, let's say Senegal. We are about three hours and a half from Fortaleza in Brazil, about six hours from Boston, where you have a direct flight from Cape Verde to Boston. Then we have what we call in Cape Verde a geostrategic location, serving our country as a hub for maritime, aerial transportation for trade, tourism, and many other goals. Okay, so it's uh, it's an island country, right? So it's island country. It's an it's island country, an nine, nine uh, inhabited countries out of ten islands and four islets. And what is the uh, topography? Is it... Uh, we have, as we take it, two group of islands. The northern islands okay. uh, and the southern islands, or the flat islands and the mountainous islands. The flat islands, uh, because most of the country, the archipelago is from a uh, volcan origin, but we do have uh, the flat islands from long-term erosion, erosion, then they become flat, offering a nice, mm -hmm. of, a lot of beaches, white sand, clear water for uh, diving, for nautic sports, for all the uh, sea and sun tourism, that's uh -huh, one, one uh -huh, hand, uh -huh. and the other islands, we do have a lot of mountains where we find the most of the population of the islands, and we still have one volcano uh, erupted, the last eruption was in 1995, still in activity. It goes up to uh, 3,000 meters almost, to uh, 2,899 to be more precise. Okay, is it, uh, so the country would, and the islands would have to be sus susceptible to weather, huh? Yes. Not only the volcanoes, but any kind uh, of As weather. a matter of fact, uh, as you know, we have this expression to consider the driest part of, of the west part of Africa, the Sahel. And my country, even in the middle of the ocean, uh, is exposed to the dry wind from the Sahel. And drought has been uh, of a major concern in the past, even bringing starvation in many occasions to my country, Ooh. but which, which is not now the case because under independence and under the whole of good governance, we are attending to this, creating uh, uh, alternatives for uh, food productions and food supply. Well, two things that you've just mentioned come to my mind. Number one, uh, it's not an agricultural country, so so much of the food is having to be imported, huh? Yes, as a matter of fact, only 10% of the country's arable the land. Uh -huh. But wow. we start recently building dams everywhere to collect rainwater. And from that rainwater, we can assure multi-crops yearly, but for vegetables, uh, fruits, and many other stuffs. Of course, for most of the cereals, we do have to import them. Uh -huh. uh, the other thing you mentioned, when you mentioned drought, something that I had read, said that the drought had uh, played a role in so many people uh, emigrating from there. And I will add that as a person who grew up in Rhode Island and uh, just spent some time up in Rhode Island, I know that many uh, folks from uh, Cabo Verde are living in the New England area, Massachusetts and Rhode Island, huh? That's true. Uh 
Immigration is something that has its roots in historical, political, and natural conditions in the country. Okay. Since the Portuguese arrived in the islands in, 19, in 1460, the, the island were uninhabited. And population start being as, as the result of a melting pot between slaves, because Cape Verde in the, it is in the, in the, in the, in the, the middle of the uh, slave hood triangle. Yes. And uh, uh, Portuguese and other Europeans, they start making the population. The population of Cape Verde is a melting pot. Among 70% are mixed. You have 30% black and small, small percent of uh, white. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, there was the first slavery uh, economy, then moving to use Cape Verde as a hub in the 19 as, as uh, uh, for uh, um, communications and uh, uh, um, coal supply for the navigation. Mm -hmm. But in, in the meantime, there was those drought, they were not taken on board by the Portuguese administration, letting a lot of people starving and most of them oh. obliged to emigrate. Emigration to the United States starts about, uh, let's say, late 18th century, when the whale boats went till the coast of Cape Verde. Ah. They start hiring uh, Cape, Verdean, uh, Cape Verdean uh, sailors. Oh. And once the, the, the season, the, the whale season finished, they, they remained in the New Bedford area. Ah, yes, yeah, sure, because the whaling industry was Cape Verde in the 1700s, oh, so New Bedford, yes. Yeah, but we do have now about 500,000 Cape Verdean living in the United States, most of them in the New England, of course, you mentioned Rhode Island, yeah. but we have all the Massachusetts, Boston, Dorchester, uh, uh, and many other uh, areas, Connecticut, and then we do have some uh, in uh, New Jersey, New York, uh, Florida, mm -hmm. Atlanta, East and even, even in in, in, in California. Uh, I want to take a little break, but we should say that we have uh, about 500,000 in the United States, yet only another 500,000 back in Cabo Verde. And a the little bit. And the rest, because we estimate our population about, about being one million, the rest in most in Europe and other, other countries. Let's hold on that note. Uh, take a little break. We're talking with uh, Ambassador Jose Luis Hosha. Is that correct? Hosha. Hosha. I like that. Portuguese, huh? Portuguese name, but from Cabo Verde. Cabo, from Verde. Cabo Verde. Cabo Verde. See, even we have to get used to it. We'll take a little break, be back on the other side, and learn more about this small island country off the coast of West Africa. Take a little break, back on the other side. Sit tight. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. ANA, Japan's largest airline with an extensive network throughout Asia. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Republic of Kazakhstan, a rich history and a future of development and growth. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. Mr. Ambassador, when we're talking about 500,000 people spread out amongst eight or nine islands, huh? Uh, what do the people do there? What, what, what drives the economy? I guess that's, I hate to put the question in that way, but what, what moves the economy? It's true that we are moving from an agriculture-based economy, which brought a lot of difficulties uh, regarding drought and, and, mm -hmm. and starvation, to take advantage of our uh, uh, geostrategic location. Then today we have a transformational agenda in the country to build in uh, up in different clusters. The first one is maritime economy. Mm -hmm. You have 
port activities, uh, you have fishery, you have uh, shipyard, you have uh, bunkering, you have a cruise terminal, and many, uh, all these activities, even, even uh, teaching in the nautical school and so on, all these activities are what we call in the islands ocean economy or blue economy. Okay. Then we, we move to uh, agribusiness because we are developing agriculture with those dams and the, the idea with uh, uh, vocational schools and, and, uh, and uh, uh, to transform those products to export them from the agricultural islands to the touristical island. Mm -hmm. Of course, tourism is one of our drivers because of our economic drivers because uh, right now it represents m about 20% um, of our GDP. Mm. Then maritime economy, fish with fisheries, mm -hmm. uh, aerial transportation, the, the, the new technology, information and uh, communication technology, ICTs, mm -hmm. is very important. Today, Cape Verde is a very ICT country because mm -hmm. you are building in, we are moving from e-government to i-government. We succeed to put all the data together and all the administration works under ICT, the, the business people, the banking, the, the financial sector, everything is under ICT. And we want to, to use also ICTs to be uh, uh, one of the economic uh, uh, sector of our country. So uh, I would think, well, first of all, what comes to my mind when we talk about Africa, West Africa, is this horror of the Ebola. Yes. Uh, so far, it has not touched your country. We hope it, it will not. How do you prevent that from happening? Because as a tourist destination, people are coming and moving around all the time. Uh, have you, like, taken precautions? Yes. Uh, how, 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 how so? Cape Verde, uh, since the beginning of this uh, crisis, Ebola crisis, decides to uh, elaborate a plan, a preventive plan, taking all the measures necessary to make control over the ports and airports. Okay. We also uh, prepared teams to, to deal with an eventual crisis. And we also establish uh, a screening at the ports and airports for people coming uh -huh. uh, from those uh, countries uh, affected. Of course, most of our tourism are not coming from West Africa. Most of our tourism, I must say, the majority, or the, almost the totality of our tourists are coming from Europe and other uh, uh, origins. Uh -huh. Uh, so, so the preparation is there. Do you think the world has, uh, how do you think the world has reacted to this incredible health crisis? I, I believe now uh, United Nations, United, United Nations, United States and many other, uh, the, uh, the, the World Health Organization, they are now quite aware of it and mm -hmm. they are taking necessary steps to control. In, in, is what now international community is trying to do is to help most of those uh, affected country to organize the, their health systems and, 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 and a technical and collective response to overcome that situation. Is there some kind of a screen uh, that still exists when uh, people are looking at Africa? Africa has today uh, one of the best economic improvements in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Africa has a youth population trying to get business and to improve living conditions. But in Africa, we still have a lot of problems uh, to solve uh, regarding uh, conflict, regarding ep epidemic uh, situations and poverty alleviation mm -hmm. that should bring the continent to a, 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 a more development uh, path uh, and uh, to, 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 to join the other continents in their course for progress. How does Cabo Verde fit into Africa? How? Yeah, how? I mean, off the coast? Uh, seems to be somewhat separated. Do you consider yourself uh, uh, an integral part of Africa? Yes, Cape Verde is part of the Africa, both uh, historically, politically, and geographically, but we do have our own uh, specificities as many other African countries. Because uh, if you take South Africa, 
in the south of the continent yes. and Morocco in the north, yes. they are completely different as you take uh, many countries in the, in, in, here in, in the American continent. Ah, so, so let me take advantage of the fact that we're together here and say, is, is it a blind spot that we're trying to treat all African countries in the same way as opposed to looking at each of them individually, if that's possible, huh? Yes. Uh, there is uh, an African identity taking all the countries belonging to the continent. Uh -huh. But once more, identity doesn't mean equality. In, the, in, in, the, in their conditions uh, 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 right now, it, it's why in order to have integration, yes. continental integration or sub-regional integration, it is very important to have harmonization at political and economic level. So, uh, what do you think is the bond that uh, brings all Africans together? What is that common denominator? The common denominator is, is to be uh, part of that continent, although they are uh, individually quite different from one to another. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they keep the same history, the same geographical reference, the same uh, cultural background, even in a very spread way. If you could make all African people a one person, and you'd look at them and you'd say, oh, here are some of the qualities that this African person may have. Uh, are there common characteristics? That's quite a difficult question because I must uh, 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 go through the importance of recognizing uh, diversity of people, diversity mm -hmm. of country, diversity of uh, uh, conditions, but they are all united under what, the same project. Is why today uh, Africa has a common agent for 2063, which means uh, in uh, 50 years after celebrating in 2013 the 50 years of, of African Union and African unity. Mm. So you're coming up on a 40th anniversary. So, so, so Cabo Verde goes back to the for, late 1400s. Uh, independence in 1975, uh, coming up on, on 40 years. So, a uh, couple of quick facts. What's the capital city's name? Praia. Praia. Praia means in Portuguese beach, but uh, seaside. The beach. Yeah. Beach, okay. Beach like seaside. Uh, but, we, but, but the capital town is Praia. So what, would, so, so what are some of the things that we would uh, draw us to the culture? Uh, be it, uh, say, music or food or art or... There is a Cape Verde identity based in, in the language. As you know, we are, uh, as we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of uh, uh, the slave uh, route, uh, we are to stress the, the fact that Cape Verde was among the first countries in that, in that context. And uh, the, what we call the national language, the Creole of Cape Verde, mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. born from that uh, uh, melting from Africa and Portuguese. Okay. And then our contribution to the world uh, can be uh, drawn from that, that uh, 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 constitution of that language mm -hmm. and also the fact that from Cape Verde we sent people everywhere to the Europe and the United States, then we are also part, we contributed in a certain way to the global society of the mm -hmm. world. But Cape Verde uh, has also its uh, a cultural heritage based in many, many other aspects. Uh, not, only, not only the language, not only this cultural uh, background, but also the fact that uh, we share the common reference toward music, mm. toward dance, Mm -hmm. toward uh, uh, literature, toward uh, many other uh, cultural expressions that every time when people of Cape Verde, being them in, in, in Europe, in Africa, in America, they can identify themselves being Cape Verdean as uh, they are uh, uh, making reference to this, the same assets. Ah. Uh, education. I was uh, happy to uh, uh, read the fact that the literacy rate uh, is very, very high, 90% literacy rate, uh, life expectancy very, very high there, and a very a good, and we talked a little bit about this, uh, a good health system as well. What are the challenges that you're facing? Because uh, in Africa, poverty is there, you know, you have to deal with that as well. 
There are two important things that happened to Cape Verde recently. Mm -hmm. Independence in 1975, and we moved to a democracy, multi-party system democracy uh, 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 in the 90s. And what was a, a permanent cross-cutting key factor for Cape Verde was good governance. Mm -hmm. Either before democracy or after democracy, the good governance were there to promote the access of the population to the most important public goods. It's one of the most democratic countries in the world. Isn't as a it? matter of fact, uh, one of these hiding agencies, they, they, they put Cape Verde as a 26th most prominent democracy in the world. Well, of, of how many countries in the world? Maybe about, about 198. And a 26. Yeah. And uh, so we're talking about civil liberties, Consensus. We talk about all the major stones that makes uh, a liberal democracy. Uh -huh. Cape Verde is a rule of law country. Rule of law? Okay. A democratic rule of law country. And I must underline two points. Uh, it is the fact that we have uh, the state under this rule of law making uh, as a re regulatory for the authority for the, the whole society mm -hmm. and the protection of the, the private. Uh, property. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, uh, we have uh, all the, from the policy making, we, we, we address most of the MDGs, Millennium Development Goals, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. regarding the access, of course, eradicate, eradicate, eradicating poverty, the access, uh, universal access to education for young girls and young, and, and young boys, mm -hmm. uh, uh, trying to, to bring the, the health uh, rate depending to the right, the highest position, and of course, uh, fighting to get electricity, water, sanitation to most of the population. Mm. We are trying to do that in Cape Verde. Uh, you're a new ambassador to the United States, and That's thank true. you for trusting us and coming and paying us a visit. Uh, just a few months now, huh? I'm almost a newly arrived ambassador because uh, I'm there since June uh -huh. this year. I presented my credentials to the President Obama in uh, uh, July 14, mm. and then I moved to attend with the President of Cape Verde uh, the U.S.-Africa Summit, the mm. first ever yes, summit yes, yes, organized yes, yes. here in Washington. What would you say is the importance of the relationship between the United States and Cabo Verde? I believe uh, being here, I want to represent, to promote, and uh, defend the interest of my country while I'm serving the strengthening of these bilateral relations. Cabo Verde uh, so far has been recognized by the uh, United States among the first at the independence and since then we launch uh, uh, very cooperative uh, relations in the fields of development, in the fields of security, in the fields of uh, economic improvements. But we do have also this human bridge, which is our uh, people here in the United States. Because uh, even before the independence, the relation was basically based on the fact that we had this uh, population from Cape Verde living, living mm. here, which is still the bridge linking the two, the two countries. You mentioned uh, earlier in our conversation tourism is so important, and I, I like the fact you get on a plane in Boston and fly there. Uh, the Hilton folks, the hotel people, uh, have just announced and groundbreaking for a huge hotel there, 200 and some rooms and presidential suite and a casino uh, and restaurants. Uh, to have a, 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 a company like that invest and all countries are trying to get foreign investment. Is, uh, is your country uh, open to uh, foreign investment? Is that part of your mission here? Of course. Uh, um, the country is open to foreign investment as one of the drivers for the economy as we are open to the tourism. And because so far the country has been uh, assisted through development aid, but with the graduation of the country out of LDCs in 2008 as a consequence of good governance, now we have to look for uh, other opportunities that can sustain uh, uh, the progress and the implementation of the economy and our ambitions to be a developed country by the 2030.
Mm. Mr. Ambassador, we're at the end of our time. Thank you for the education, and thank you so much for letting us know about your wonderful country. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be here with you today, too. Thank you. For information about This is America and the World, and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. ANA, Japan's largest airline with an extensive network throughout Asia. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Republic of Kazakhstan, a rich history and a future of development and growth. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services.